Everyone always talks about Bardo. Bardo is such a huge theme. She was such the epitome of beauty, um, especially in the 60s and 70s. And we all would love to look like Bardo. Who wouldn't? So Hannah is actually very Bardo-esque anyway. So just to change the theme of just going Bardo liner, Bardo beach, Bardo whatever, I decided to do Bardo Bride using these wonderful new products um, by Chanel. And so we'll start from there. So I'm gonna make her look like a bride a la Brigitte Bardot. I've moisturized the skin. I've used the Hydra Beauty Micro Creme. It's the new moisturizer and it's just really, it's light and textured and it has little bubbles of deliciousness in it. They sort of soak right into the skin. That's why her skin is looking so beautiful. So I highly recommend it. Then I'm going to use the new sponge foundation, which I just simply adore. It's called Le Beige Touche Le Tante Belle Mine, which means in English, beautiful glow. And I'm just going to knock that into the skin. Again, remembering that I'm inclined to use a lot of foundation. Don't worry if you see too much foundation going on, I will blend it in. I'm using the sponge because with this foundation, you have to press into the spongy texture of it and you'll pick up more with the sponge. It makes it easier than using the fingers. Knocking this in, this is just going to even out Hannah's gorgeous skin. I love the fact she has to resist me. <laughs> Takes two to tango, right, baby? <laughs> right. <laughs> Teamwork. So I'm just blending this in. I'll, bl I'll finish the blending with my fingers, but I'm just doing the initial pat, tap, tap, patting it in with a sponge. This is so cool, this foundation. So now I'm moving on to concealer, which is a corrector perfector. There you go. How about that for rhyming? It's actually correction perfecta, but hey. And this is just going to put it under there. Close it up, hold that for me, my darling, and I'm going to pat this in. Now, because this is for a bridal look, I don't care, and it's not for a natural look, it's for a bridal look, so I don't care if there is a slight difference in the color of the, of the concealer, so it just brightens up the eye a bit more. As you can see, it's a tiny bit paler, which is perfect for this look. So that's that done. I'm now going to move on to the eyes. Um, I'm using the new Ombre Premier colors by Chanel. They are amazing. There's over 20 colors in the, in the range and they are like they come individually, which I love. So you can have your two favorite colors with you all the time. I'm going to be using more than two on Hannah today, but I'm going to start with this lovely pink one, which is called Rose Synthetique. And using a lovely great big fat brush, I'm going to use this again under the brow bone. It just sort of brings it up to that sort of softness all and I'm just going to use it all over the lid really casually all over the lid and already that is so pretty I just love the way makeup because of the textures of makeup it has become so easy to use and with the big brushes like this brush is fantastic you can just kind of slap it on in a brushy sensor kind of way rather than a finger kind of way and also powders have become so soft they often look like the texture of creams, but obviously will last much longer. And when you're doing bridal makeup, you want it to last, so I will be using powders throughout this entire look. Okay, color number one done. Color number two, a soft taupe. I'm gonna take that to the socket of the eye, through here, a la Bardo. Bardo always had wonderful sockets, it was a very 60s thing. So I'm gonna take this here, the classic back and forth, back and forth, down onto the corner of the, of the lid here. So the whole thing is, is working together. Right, turn to me a bit more, my darling. Perfect. Right, back and forth, back and forth, into the corner there. Now let me just see if that's even. Yeah, and a little bit more this side. I'm moving on now onto a dark brown. These sort of colors work with every type of makeup and they will just enhance the eye. I will be adding the Bardo way, a bit of sort of dark gray, but this is just for more of the basic color. So using a small Chanel brush, I'm just going to work into along the lid. And another thing about these, this texture is that they just don't fall. Like you don't, there's no fall onto the lower lid, which is fantastic. They're so well blended that they're very safe to use, if that makes sense. Because you know, normally we always suggest that you knock the color into the back of your hand, blah, 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 which of course is essential. But these actually, they don't seem to fall at all, which is wonderful. 
I'm just taking it up onto the lid so then it becomes more blended with the other color through the brow. Do a bit more on this side. Okay, I'm gonna stand in front of Hannah just to make sure they're even. Okay, moving on to the next color. Now I'm gonna to come to the Bardot color, which is the kind of lovely, lovely, almost black color. I'm gonna use an even smaller brush. Hold that, my darling. She's a good assistant, isn't she? Very good assistant, in fact. <laughs> now this is just going to add that sort of really intensity. But don't forget she's a bride, so I don't want to be too, too hard. I'm putting it right in the roots of the lashes. And I'm going to do the other side. You know, really, if you're using the right products and you know what, if you know what the look you're aiming for, makeup should not take long these days. The products are so well developed that you don't have to spend time using, you know, building things up or whatever. They work very quickly and achieve a great look really fast. I mean, with these Chanel products, I mean, look how quickly we're running through this. So now I'm going to decide to which colour I put underneath the eye to achieve the Bardot look. And I think I'm going to put this grey colour. So again, taking the powder, I'm going to ask you to look up, my darling. I'm going to go probably quite low, so it gets that really sort of lovely, smoky, smoky feeling. Feathering it in, feathering it in, feathering it in. I'm working quickly because I want you to see the response to the products. So you're probably all thinking I'm working too quickly. Don't worry, guys, it'll be all right. I've taken this right into the corner, and I'm going to take this into the corner there for the smokiness, and into this corner here. Right, so that's that done for the time being. I might come back to more of that product. In the meanwhile, I'm going to use a pencil along the roots of the lashes on top. So just literally, just literally in the roots of the lashes. Please note, I'm not creating any line. I'm just giving some more depth and punch to the eye. Open, my darling. Okay, you can see there's no line, but it's really had an effect, okay? Right, look down that way, perfect. I'm going straight back into the outside corner of here, just giving it a tiny bit of length, but without making it look like liner. Just, I still want a smoky, soft eye rather than liner eye. Now, Q-tip, here we come. Just gonna blend a tiny bit with the Q-tip just in there. So just softening it a bit with the Q-tip. Coming back in with the beautiful dark gray, just taking it on the outside corner, on the other side on the outside corner there, on the outside corner there. Right, so that looks beautiful. So, I'm using waterproof mascara. I don't use mascara, waterproof mascara all the time at all, because it's obviously much more difficult to get off. But as a bride, or at a wedding, or at occasions where you possibly could cry out of, out of joy, waterproof mascara is the only way to go. So in this case, I'm definitely using, the bride is gonna have waterproof mascara. So look down, my darling. Right, I'm going to lift the lid and I'm going to get right into the roots of the lashes with this gorgeous, volumizing waterproof mascara. Look that way and down, perfect. And um, we might build lots of coats, we might not. We'll see how one coat looks. Bardot always had like lovely clumpy lashes, so I'm loving this kind of clumpiness that's happening. Look at the difference. It's amazing what mascara does. Now I'm going to do the bottom lashes. Turn to me, look up, perfect. Back and forth, back and forth, down, down, down. Back and forth, back and forth, down, down, down. That's the way you do it. And if there's too much on one, you just pinch with your finger. Wow, those eyes. Right, look down in this way. I'm now doing a second coat on top, just in the roots of the lashes. Now, um, I'm gonna brush the brows. Right, now for me, Bardo was not about a brow at all. So I'm just gonna brush the brows and probably not fill them in at all anyway, just leave them as they are. Um, they don't need to be filled in for this look. I personally feel that soft brows are great with a strong eye. So I love that kind of almost no brow effect. I find it much more contemporary, more of now, but also very bardo. I will, on the other hand, gel them with the new gel. Actually, doesn't that look great? But now what I'm gonna do is having gelled them, I'm just gonna also make them lie like in, in a straight, in a sort of more of a curved position rather than going up because it'll seal them in that position. It's amazing this gel because it actually does take the brows straight up and then we can just straighten out the corners. Right, now I'm going to do the blush. So for the blush, I'm going to use the new Chanel cream blushes, which are amazing, the Le Beige collection. 
and I'm going to go slightly apricot because we're thinking more summer and we're thinking Saint-Tropez and we're thinking that boat bar bardo feeling. So I'm just going to knock that on the skin there, there, there. Just do that and then I'm going to massage it in. Just knock it in very gently. So, I mean, the thing about Bridget Bardo is that she was such an icon of the 60s because she was so totally real and fabulous and beautiful was sorry she's you know the amazing woman she is now but it was all about this kind of natural beauty that had a very very strong impression and i think it was partly due with the lifestyle she had because she had such an amazing lifestyle she was very free so i want i think that's important that this makeup should look free at the same time as looking very done so that's um the blush done Actually, do you know what? I was going to do the mouth, but I'm actually going to do the powder. Now, this is the time when you probably need to have your Poudre Universelle in compact form, which means you can carry it around with you and have it with you all the time, because what you don't want is shine at your wedding. Um, a bit of shine and, and shimmer, of course, but not too much. So um, I'm just going to knock back the shine where we do not think it's becoming, which is around the nose here. There. this is setting the makeup as well and so it will last all day and there will naturally come through a bit of shine but I don't really want her to look very wet at the beginning the glow will still come through I'm leaving the cheeks no longer do we ever put powder like on this area because it's such a beautiful area to have natural glow now having finished the powder and done her cheeks with that lovely dewy cream blush I'm actually not going to put any bronzer on Hannah's face. I think she has gorgeous bone structure that is natural and soft. And I've gone so far away from, from bronzer and we don't have to use these products. We can of course use them if we want to, but I'd rather not to. So she looked really, really soft and fresh and sort of rose petal like with this wonderful strong bardo eye. So I'm going to keep the skin unbronzed. And she certainly doesn't need any definition because it's naturally there as you can see so i'm just going to put a little bit of lip balm on your mouth darling just to freshen up the mouth i mean that's almost like the mouth is done just with that but seeing the mouth has to be more um defined let's use that word with a pop with a bit more pop more color i'm going to make it a bit more colorful um i'm going to clean the mouth just to get rid of the any excess of foundation on the mouth and let her natural lip color come through which is the most amazing lip color. Look at that. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a lip liner, natural, and just go. This, this, this color's existed in the line for quite a while. It's a really good one. It's very natural. We love that. Okay, just, to, just bring it out a tiny bit. I don't want any de de real definition. That's that. And then moving on to these, which I simply adore. These are the Chanel matte lipsticks. This is gonna real, add a real pop of color in a gentle way. What I've done here, which some of you might find interesting, is I've kept a lot of the shadow underneath, which is very Bardo-esque. Um, we obviously, depending on your eye shape and depending on how you feel, put more shadows through the socket of the eye, which is through here. But I'm loving this on Hannah's face. I'm loving the, the darkness under the eye. I think it's quite dreamy and um, kind of seductive and gorgeous and just a look that really, really suits Hannah. So, um, but you could always put more through here if you wanted to. But I'm loving the way she looks right now and I think it's great. So the lips are done, the cheeks are done, the eyes are done, the foundation, of course. And you are ready to go and put your dress on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.